say test. Test, yeah. test, <laughs> test. You're fired. Do you hear me? She's yes. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fired. <laughs> Okay, so dear esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference of Mission Canada 2019 to Ukraine. Our mission is a neutral and impartial election observation mission run by Canada. The mission's mandate is to provide an assessment of the presidential election of Ukraine in light of Ukraine's OSC commitments and other international standards for democratic elections, as well as Ukraine's national legislation. Uh, I'd like to go over some technicalities. This press conference is streaming online uh, on the YouTube channel of the Ukraine Crisis Media Center. So we would like to welcome our viewers and thank you very much for joining us online. We are also issuing a press release in English and in Ukrainian and the mission's preliminary statement of findings in English and in Ukrainian, as well as there is a press kit there. You can pick it up on your way out. A French version of these documents will be available later today online on our mission website as well. And now I would like to introduce our presenters of this preliminary statement of findings. The Honorable Lloyd Axworthy, who is the head of our mission, Canada 2019. And the deputy head of mission is Olya odinska Krod. The Honorable Lloyd Axworthy is an accomplished statesman and academic and the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada and Currently, he is serving as the chair of the World Refugee Council. He is one of Canada's leading voices on global migration and refugee protection. The, our deputy head of mission, Olya odinska Grod, is a seasoned executive director of several national organizations in Canada. And now I would like to ask Mr. Dr. Lloyd Axworthy to present our preliminary assessment of the first round of the Ukrainian presidential election 2019. Well, thank you very much, uh, Agnes. I learned very early that if you blow into the mic, it usually blows back, so I'm here to provide my first uh, uh, level of uh, prevention. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined by Olya Grod, who's our deputy uh, head of mission, and to recognize uh, our uh, very distinguished uh, ambassador from Canada who is joining us uh, for the uh, press conference today. As I explained, uh, today we released our preliminary statement on the findings uh, for the 2019 presidential election in Ukraine, uh, which analyzes really all aspects of the election process. We had 50 long-term observers on site several weeks before the election, another 110 short-term ob observers. It meant that we were able to be in every region of Ukraine, every oblast, and in fact, uh, in our latest report, We've had visitations in over close to 900 precincts throughout the country. We've also been able to have uh, well over 100 meetings with civil society, with uh, government administrators, with police and security, uh, with media, uh, to talk about their views and examinations and the issues that were raised. And we've had particular interest in, in talking to minority groups, the Tahar people from Crimea and others, to make sure that the, the full scope of our democratic coverage reaches all voters, not just a selected group. I'd like to begin by congratulating all the candidates and the Central Election Commission, as well as uh, the district commissions and precinct commissions, uh, for their conducting a well-organized voting day where I 
b strongly believe, and in fact witnessed, uh, ballots being voted on with a degree of confidence that their voices would be heard. I spent, as many of you did, uh, the day visiting different sites, and in each case, the response back was that the people felt that the system was working. And in saying that, I'd like to really recognize something that is uh, the essential fundamental principle of a democratic system, and that's the participation of people. This was not an organization that was top-down. Uh, there was close to half a million Ukrainians participating in a variety of ways and enabling their fellow citizens uh, and enabling them to become part of the political process. And I think that's, in a sense, a good lesson to start with, that part of democracy is to encourage and invite the full participation of its citizens. And certainly uh, the fact that our mission here is made up of volunteer Canadians from every part of Canada who are giving up their time and interest uh, to serve as observers, I think is really a, an important statement uh, that all of us who are in democratic societies needs to understand and continue to affirm. What we want to say, basically, is that based on the observations, discussions, exchanges, the elections were very fair, met international standards for democratic elections, and should generate confidence in the voters according uh, to these assessments. It's obviously likely that there'll be a a second round of elections, and then there will be parliamentary elections in the fall. I think this first round was able to provide uh, a very strong base and foundation on which those future elections can be held. At the same time, I'd like to recognize that there are concerns, some systematic in their impact, that need to be addressed and to continue the ongoing evolution of the democratic system in Ukraine. Changes in legislation that would make it easier for the IDPs, of which there's over 1.6 million in the country, to exercise their franchise. Uh, some opaqueness in Canadian, in the uh, campaign financing that goes on. Uh, the impact of a high concentration of media ownership and the fact that some candidates did not observe campaign media rules. But I'd like to draw a special line in some of the key issues of the election, which in most cases would be uh, really obstacles, serious obstacles to overcome. One is the very apparent and ongoing effort through interference by other parties to engage in a form of hybrid interference. I think we could even call it warfare spreading of disinformation, the efforts to provide disruptions. And it is uh, welcome to note that the Ukraine authorities have done their best to take preventive action with the help of a variety of uh, donors and contributions. New technology has been employed. New training has taken place amongst security forces and campaign officials. And I think it really is a model uh, that many of us around the world who are also facing elections, as we are in Canada in close to six months, uh, that this is a factor that we have to come to grips with. It's a new one. It can be highly destructive. And that uh, there are lessons to be learned from this election that I know for sure when I return to my own country, I'll make every effort to uh, transmit those concerns and the wake-up call that this uh, new factor in elections uh, is presenting to the maintenance and the stability of a democratic system. And in this case, I, I again want to express my appreciation to the cooperation that we received amongst those who are involved in the preventative efforts to deal with the cyber issue, uh, lessons that we can learn and take back uh, into our own countries, and one that certainly impels uh, in continuing strong cooperation at the international level to meet the threats and risks 
that certain others are using this new technology uh, to thwart the exercise of people's voices in a democratic way. And therefore, it's uh, an important lesson for all of us to learn. I'd also like to begin by commenting on the very uh, exciting and incredibly powerful presence of so many women in the administration of the election. Uh, as I traveled about, the uh, number of women who had taken on roles of responsibility for the conduct of the election was very impressive. However, if you allow me, I'm uh, at one point in my checkered career, I was a minister for status of women in Canada, is that there is not nearly the level of participation in the actual electoral system. And I would hope that the parties uh, would undertake uh, efforts to provide for a much wider involvement of women in the election process, to become uh, members of the parliament, to become members of their governing at both the oblast level and at the local levels. I can say this to you. Uh, this may be, this is off cuff. Uh, don't take it as the official statement of the team. But I have, I was a member of parliament for 27 years in Canada. Went through nine elections. And what I can tell you in each of those stages of development from the time I was a a small babe in the woods, that the increasing participation of women in our political system, in our political process, has greatly added to the effectiveness of our governance. And if you don't have the full involvement of all citizens, then there are weaknesses and problems to ensue. So we simply, I provide that simply as a comment of somebody who's been in the system and uh, recognizes that this is a, important step, I think, that needs to be implemented in terms of the Ukraine system. I also want to take note, in terms of our findings, uh, the real difficulty of Ukrainian citizens living in Russian-occupied Crimea, and in the, uh, particularly the indigenous Tatar community, and the number of Ukrainians who are in the occupied territories who have found a variety of obstructions and difficulties in being, being able to exercise their vote. We strongly urge, as one of the recommendations that the legislation that's being considered here in Ukraine to establish a, a broader set of rights and procedures for the IDPs uh, should be implemented as soon as possible. And that the other efforts to make the obstructions that are clear to the authorities in the eastern occupied areas and territories uh, needs to be corrected. And I think this is something that is, again, a concern for all of us. If you deny people a vote, you're denying a fundamental right. And those who are making that denial must be accountable for, the, for their actions in denying the right of individuals to make their vote. So the issue and situation of the internally displaced people, I think, is one that uh, really is going to require a very concerted set of actions uh, by Ukraine itself. But I think there's a role for the international community to play uh, to uh, push back on these uh, suppression of rights that are clear. The media environment in Ukraine, as uh, we found, was open, active, vital, exciting, but sometimes concentrated. And I'd like to draw a legend in terms of a systemic issue, the importance of having a media that also represents virtually all points of view. And I would hope that uh, what we've seen in terms of the dynamics in the media environment here uh, will continue to grow and enhance. And I think it's also important that candidates and parties who have been in certain circumstances um, not following the spirit of the law in terms of media participation uh, need to be held to account. And I hope, as it looks, there will be a second round uh, that those issues will be openly addressed and that the authorities will take on uh, serious education with, can with the candidates and the parties to ensure that that takes place. 
I also just want to say that uh, the difficulties, however, uh, and the hardships and some of the obstructions, um, putting them all aside for the moment, the fundamental is that the election conducted on March 31st set a good base for the next round of dis discussions, both in the presidential election and the parliamentary elections. It should lead to a confidence amongst the electors that there is a fair system, their voices can be heard, and that this will result in a more democratic process for all included. The election environment here has been competitive. There have been choices available to voters. And the turnout, which I think at last count was 63%, is well within the range that many democracies around the world would be very pleased to achieve. In saying that, I want to uh, make the commitment that Mission Canada will remain in Ukraine for the duration of the entire election process, and we will continue to observe the responses and results that we hope can be transferred into the second round in the parliament elections. It's been a real privilege uh, for me to be part of this procedure, to meet so many exciting, committed people. I, I suppose someone like me who's gone through nine elections always just gets a little buzz when you get close uh, to the ballot box. But I must say I was really highly impressed by the commitment shown by the voters coming in, the people administering in the elections, and the candidates and the parties they represented. Uh, it was, for me, a real privilege to be an observer. Thank you very much. So thank you so much for the presentation, uh, Dr. Oxworthy. And we have now time for questions. Um, if you have any questions, it's the time now to please ask it and all them. And um, please state your name and the media you're representing. Yes, also in Ukrainian. We have to apologize. We were late with setting up this press conference because there was a presentation before us. So. Um, we didn't have time to pick up the headphones, but you can also ask questions in uh, Ukrainian. And we will just repeat it in English. Or French. Or French, <laughs> even, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? In Ukrainian, yes. Asking now. So you should come so there. Is there a question in Ukraine? Is the, is the question. Yeah. <laughs> so there are no questions. No questions, or is there any question? Okay, let's go. No question. If anyone like an interview. Yes, so uh, then in that case, I would like to thank the um, head of mission, the honorable uh, Dr. Uh, the Honorable Lloyd Axworthy for presenting the, the preliminary statement of finding our report. And um, thank you very much for being with us today. Um, we look forward to meeting you next time in case of the second round, which is very likely. And we're going to issue another preliminary statement as well. There's a linkage to the full report. And we're going to issue our final report uh, well, approximately. Our report now has a linkage to Yes, I'll say that two months after the completion of the entire electoral cycle. And our report is also available online in English and in Ukrainian and later today in French on our mission website. That's canadamissions.ca slash newsroom. And uh, I would like to invite the media to stay and um, perhaps for a further conversation or interviews with the head of mission and the deputy head of mission. Thank you very much. <laughs>